videos, and photos. We will play them live as we wait for our live stream to begin. Thank you. catch you before you leave our live stream today we are in fact live we are just uh, waiting for our live stream to begin please stand by as our live stream is about to begin we go live at 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time every single day Monday through Friday except for Saturday and Sunday that is family time but thank you for joining our live stream today please stand by as our live stream begins and wait and watch our commercials is the rinse bar of our solar panel brush designed the opposite to our window cleaning brush. Isn't glass just glass? You might be thinking like why would it be different? Well there's one really important difference between solar panels and windows. It's called the pitch or the angle of the panel compared to the windows. While windows are almost always at 90 degrees, Solar panels are angled at between 20 and 45 degrees depending on the latitude of the installation. At 90 degrees, water will run off the glass fast using the effect of gravity. When a panel is angled at 45 degrees, the effect of gravity on the rinse water on the panel is actually halved. So this means the water will roll down the glass at half the speed. And to make matters worse, the dirt may fall to the bottom of the rinse water and potentially stay on the panel, leaving dirt spots. So let's break this down. First, we'll talk about the rinse bars on window brushes and then how we clean solar panels. And then you'll learn why it is not as efficient to use a window cleaning brush to clean solar panels. Could our industry approach to cleaning solar panels be wrong? and in fact need to be turned upside down. When we clean windows with a water-fed brush, we have the rinse bar on the top of the brush. That's because when spot-free water is last on the glass, then the windows will dry spot-free. We agitate the window with the upstroke, and then we rinse the window with the downstroke. Now with a properly designed rinse bar, we can leave the brush on the window relying on gravity to pull that rinse water off the window. Now it might look the same with solar panels, but it's not. 
We still agitate the solar panel with the upstroke and rinse with the downstroke. However, we do not use jets on the top of the brush to get the dirty water off the panel. We kind of push the dirt up the panel, but we can't rely on gravity to pull all the dirty water off the panel. It like moves too slow. It's like taking two steps forward and one step back. Now, of course, we can do it and people do do it, but it takes more time. Now, if we turn the window cleaning brush upside down so that we have the jets pointing down the panel, we can then pull the dirty water off the panel with the bottom bristle blades of the solar brush without needing to rely on gravity. And that's why we set up solar rocker with most of the jets on the bottom of the brush. We then use the bristles on the bottom of the brush to pull the dirty water off the panel. We have jets, but less jets on the top of the solar brush because their job is not to remove the really dirty water. It's more like a, a polishing rinse, leaving the solar panel spot free. And here's something else you can consider. You can actually change your cleaning technique. Of course, you're still pushing some dirty water up the glass in the upstroke. So you're either going to push that water over the top of the panel or stop a little short of the extreme edge of the panel and lift the brush slightly at the top of the stroke. Let the dirty water from above the brush run under the brush and then pull all the dirty water off the panel with the downstroke. This technique gets more dirt off the panel with each stroke, meaning you're cleaning solar panels faster. So to summarize, Having most of the jets under the brush when cleaning a solar panel gives you a more effective downstroke rinse, which means you get a faster solar panel clean. Now just one more point. If you're cleaning solar panels from above, like you were standing on the apex of a roof, it's the same principle. You just need to add an adapter to reverse the orientation of the solar brush so you keep the jets pointing down the panel. By the way, this is the science behind the design of the rinse function of our new solar rocker brush. And feel free to borrow our slogan when you're selling your services to your customers. Clean energy shouldn't be dirty. Hey, if you enjoyed this workshop, please share it with others. Leave a comment and subscribe to the Future Cleaning YouTube channel. I'll answer any questions in the next Q&A Friday. Each workshop and Q&A is available in podcasts. Just search Reach It Workshop in Apple or Spotify. And for your training manual, you can find a PDF version and blogs, articles at futureofcleaning.com. That's it for today. See you in the next Reach It Workshop. Welcome to a free live stream built around six sectors. This live stream created for mobile service professionals. We would like to introduce you to your host, Ben Bergeloff, president of Service Six Sigma, and Perry Tate, co-founder of Service Six Sigma. Welcome to Service Six Sigma, your live stream for mobile service professionals. Woo. Welcome, good welcome. morning and good evening. Here we have the crew and today we have a stand-in because we had to pull this together pretty quickly, but we are going to be talking about solar panel cleaning math, right? So understanding what makes it work, yeah? And uh, But just before that, I will just give a quick rundown of what is Service 6 Sigma. Service 6 Sigma is for the service industries. Right, It's a live stream podcast, it's free, and the intention of it is that we can learn from each other different ways of thinking, different ways of marketing, different ways of controlling businesses, and then with that, we can then uh, cross-pollinate and improve our businesses. Now, 
having so the six sigma part is the improvement part six sigma is a business term it means the the improvement of a business process by the elimination of the risk of what goes wrong so you basically see things that go wrong and you fix them see things that go wrong and you fix them and ultimately you get to what's called six sigma which is what the airline industry should be and what the nuclear industry should be for example those are the extreme levels of that and so um, we we see this um, as the the journey towards six sigma for the service industries and um, and then we've divided your business up into six sectors of <clears throat> pardon me of what we might call your business so the first one is the the attract this is all the marketing the influencer social media influencing um your how you attract people with the with your van with your clothes uniforms with your uh, door hangers all that sort of thing so we'll get to people who have got like a lot of knowledge and skill and all of that then that's part of that attract part then having attracted a potential customer we need to be able to convert the customer so yesterday we had um uh we had we talked about using some automation for that um with the crm and also there's people that go to the customer and there are other people that use google um, earth and then have a look at the property so there's, there's, that's the sales side then we go to deliver how to deliver the tools and that's really what some of what today is about today is a little bit about the convert because it's the math that converts solar panel cleaning for a customer and the delivery of the service such that the math works having got that you need to control your business so that's your crm and all the systems and processes your training your training manuals your your training regimes and all of that once you've got all of this documented and you've got it practiced you have your attract convert deliver and control which is acdc so it's easier to remember then you can scale the business by either adding additional services to your to your uh, what you provide for your customers and or multiplying and replicating the number of trucks that you're using to do that and having done that you are in a position probably to share with others your success and those people are the people that we invite to be the guests on um, on Service Six Sigma from a from a teaching point of view and then other times we invite people that are looking to be taught so it's kind of like meant to be interesting and it really sense without saying any more I think that's it and then we welcome of course Mr Ben Bergloff Mr Noah Joe and Mr Harrison Tate to talk solar math <laughs> Hello. I am muted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is inspired by um, yesterday. Uh, last night, I had a ninety-minute phone call um, with a guy from Yemen, um, and um, and he is uh, um, cleaning solar panels, but he's actually wanting to expand the cleaning of solar panels. Hang on a second. I've got a little buzz going on. I've got a live chat. Uh, quick. Harry, can you see if you can catch that? If I jump out of that? Um, yeah. So, 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 and, and he's been approaching the Chamber of Commerce, the governments, and he said what's happening in Yemen is that all the farmers have got, um, uh, are installing solar panels. And the way that Yemen is working, the government is, uh, is uh, promoting um, the solar panel manufacturing in local areas and then subsidizing the purchasing of the solar panels from those areas so that those businesses that manufacture those solar panels have got a guaranteed market and that's actually very similar what's happened in china they put the solar panel factory in an area and then they subsidize so that you don't get the traveling of the solar panels and everything like that and the business is a guaranteed success the one that makes the solar panels because they've got a guaranteed market and the government subsidizes it so that was interesting for me to see that that's what they're doing um then he needs to go to the government and say i want to add solar panel cleaning what's that noise in the background ben do you know can you work out who it is no oh 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 it's you <laughs> it's you <laughs> okay. it's a printer oh um, <laughs> uh, yeah i thought it was a printer and i'm going what? <laughs> what's going on <laughs> So, Somebody's printing off so, like a book over here. <laughs> right. Okay. Got it. So, um, so, so what we should be able to do is, you know, as a result of that phone call, you know, I went through all the math of, of how a solar panel cleaning works um, from a selling of solar panel cleaning point of view. 
And then Noah, you know, I'll probably just check with you. Are you doing solar panel cleaning with alternative window cleaning yet? No, there's there's not many in our area at all. Right. You'll see them pop right. up every now and then, but that's, you know, not frequent enough. Not frequent enough, yeah. Mm -mm. And Ben, are you are you getting them in um in Idaho? Lots of solar panels. We really? even have solar, solar panels for pools. So wow. they'll have solar panels that heat up the water. And yeah, that's solar panel. Yeah. 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 So my my background, which people may not know, but I actually when I went to China, I actually went to China in the um, solar regime. I work for a company called Ecofan in Austria. And um, and I was selling solar thermal, which is you know the swimming pools are a are a, are a, a soft version of that, like a like a simple version of that. Um, but we were selling them for boilers in five star hotels and hospitals and things like that, you know, preheating the water for the boiler. Um, and we also did solar PV, which which we'll show you in Dubai. One of the installations that we were training the local guys on how to how to um, how to clean the solar panels back in two thousand eleven. Right. So, so where do we go from here? The, 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 so let me ask you, Ben, um, or, and have you been cleaning some of the solar panels? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With my, and, and uh, with your solar rocker, mm -hmm. look at that baby. That's a big brush. Yeah. It's a big so, one. So, yeah. Yeah. And, um, Let's pull Harrison up on screen as well because he's he. I think he might have been the cameraman in Dubai. Were you, Harry? <laughs> Sorry, muted. can't hear you. You're muted. Yeah. Who's going to unmute him? I there think Ben muted me. Doesn't want yeah. me on the show. I've heard things. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's taking over. You've he heard too much. Then. He knows too much. He knows too much. So I'm no longer I'm gonna, second in command. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to try and um, use as much as I can to interact, you know, because it's quite difficult, you know, giving a presentation as compared to either teaching or or trying to get examples back. So I'll refer to you, Ben, um, in that sense. So, uh, and these questions are actually just to set up, you know, the data that I'm that I'm going to share. It doesn't matter if you are or aren't doing what I'm talking about, but it's kind of like, if you are, I can go further with it, you know, in that sense and apply it to your business, which makes it easier for us. Sure. And then from your point, no, you know, there's no doubt that at some point solar panels will come in and yes. you might find if you Googled, you might find that there are some solar farms, but it's not, um, but it's not uh, because it's not in your target mm -hmm. market that you may not be aware that they're being put in. Yeah. So, so, um, so it'll be interesting, you know, it might open your eye to another, to another market because if you can clean solar panels faster than the other guy, you can judge a, a better price. And that's where we're going to, that's what we're going to come down and to. work out deals with solar panel companies that install solar panels. And that's what I do is I go to solar panel installation companies and we will do their solar cleaning when they install the solar panels and we are their maintenance for their, solar panels oh nice nice yeah that's very, very nice. well getting in early mm -hmm. so do you have a um solar gain guarantee or something like that <clears throat> like a rainy like day when it guarantee? rains no i don't i normally with windows very, I, do. You, I don't think it's a great see, idea no no it's not it's not it's gain. not the rain guarantee it's a very clever idea the solar so so the principle of solar panel is um what we get from using a solar panel is called solar gain right it's a gain now the gain is in one of two forms it's either a gain in heat energy or light energy which is turned into or the light energy is turned into electricity so you get a pv panel as an electrical panel and a solar thermal panel is is turned into heat in water and then your rooftop uh, as a rule you there's not often a um, swimming pool system with glass on top. Usually it's just a black rubber. Yeah, so they're not... Um, in the glass panels, they've normally got a vacuum so that they get less heat loss um, and less um, less loss out of the panel. They're trying to catch and hold all the, all the energy which goes in from the sun to the panel. Right. So let's ask this. Um, ben, when you go to an installation... There is a meter measuring 
the um, the net electricity mm-hmm. being transferred from the solar panel at this time to the grid or to their battery bank. Do you ever look at that? I don't. Uh-uh. Hmm. Okay, so so that you know why he doesn't look that, at that, Buzz? Because he doesn't need to. Because <laughs> he doesn't need to. <laughs> One. Two, he doesn't yeah. have the sales. It, you're about to get it, Ben, but you don't have the sales yeah. pitch to connect those two things together. Yeah, yeah. To know the so the next one you could try this. So what's this gonna happen if you get a, if, you. If, if you get a very dirty solar panel, then what happens is that you can see the surface of the solar panel. When mm-hmm. you can see the surface of a solar panel, right, you're seeing the dirt that's on the solar panel. When you see white, you're seeing white is the reflection of all light. Black is the absorption of all light. And the colors in between are the spectrum of what's being reflected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you see red, red is coming back to you. Right. So when you see a, a panel and you see it's white, that you're seeing your the solar energy that's meant to be going to the black wafer or the black surface inside the panel, it's being reflected back to your eyes. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you um um it, there's it's one of those clips from Dubai has got that one where it looks like the dirty and you can see the before and after. That is a that, that one is a good example yeah. of that. If you Pull that one up, yeah. Do you want and audio? Is this on is it? part of the. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think. Well, you maybe that one. Uh, that's really crappy audio. So this is in Dubai. Then this is no. This is yeah. Anyway, we'll show we'll show you this one, and we'll come back to this one. This is the. This is 2011. We were using small brushes, right? But um, it's the other one. Hmm. Um, I don't think I have you see that video. The, you see, it's the first one I sent to you. Uh, that's okay. So, so the first part of the pitch yeah, is that if I can, if I can see your solar panel and it looks gray or white or light brown, right? I'm not seeing your solar panel. I'm seeing the dirt on your solar panel. If I remove that, the solar energy will go to your panel. This one here. So there goes your before and after. He's talking in Arabic because um, it's actually I'm it's in Dubai training his I'm training his training in Dubai. Yeah, so all these buildings along along the palm have solar panels on the roof for all the residentials. So that's the you can see the dirt, and then if you can see that, what you're seeing is the, is light coming back to you, right? So um, so when you take that off, you you see black and the black is where the solar energy is meant to go. Right. So that's an important point to be able to point out to somebody. If I can see the surface of your panel, I'm seeing your solar energy being reflected back back at us, not going through to the, to the, to the wafer or, or the black surface underneath. Okay. That's enough. Ben. That'll do. Uh, you can see that basic principle. So, so this is the, um, this is the, principle of uh, being able to explain to a customer that that that's their solar game the math um the math of selling solar um as other than just i'll keep your solar panels clean right which is the simplistic sales pitch and i'm not saying that you need to complicate the sales pitch but because i'm used to working in the commercial arena but the math says that the cost of cleaning needs to be less than the solar loss from a dirty panel. But this makes total sense when you're talking about a larger scale job. So like if it's yeah, just so someone's well, it, house it, or whatever, that wouldn't make so much sense. It's not a bad pitch, but yeah, actual the, factual the, the, sense. The, the, the chances are on a lot of residential that the cost of cleaning will actually not be, um, if they had regular cleaning, the cost of cleaning for in the West would probably be higher than the solar gain loss or the solar loss, right? Mm. Actually, um, because the, the panel has to be quite dirty before you actually get, um, get significant losses in solar gain. 
you know, a, a mildly Did you read this before, Buzz? Still getting it. With uh, Chris um, Honey? I checked before and after, and it's hard to make a comparison. Yes. So Chris Honey is, is talking about the, the meter. There's a little meter, um, and it has a little number on it, which is the, 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 the volts going through or whatever. I think it's volts. Anyway, it's the maybe it's watts. No, it should be watts. Volts times amps. So it'll be the watts going through from the from being captured from the solar panels. And so, um, so um, if it's a cloudy day, and I'll show you that in a in a in a in a um, in a, um, in a graph that's coming up later. But if it's a cloudy day, you can actually see the the data coming through that the cloud came over and the solar gain dropped and the cloud came over and the solar gain dropped and the cloud came over and the solar gain dropped just like in a whole day you can see at six in the morning the solar gain is really small and at the azimuth you know which is around noon um then the the is your peak solar gain but if it's cloudy it's yeah. not a peak yeah it's not well it's, yeah, so it's ben, still a peak but it, but it's the least part yeah the reason why when perry talks about this graph um we in our factory building in China, the top floor is a solar panel factory. So it's not mm. like a large scale factory, but it's like all new technology, like solar panel stuff for um, solar farms in China. Mm. And so we're pretty good friends with the manager, like owner of that business. And so we worked alongside him while we were developing the uh, solar rocker and the uh, rubber scrub for like ARC coated panels or mm. any reflective coated panels. And so when Perry talks about the graph, he's talking about like the software that we were allowed access to on the panels on the roof when we were cleaning them. Mm. Right. right so, yes, yes. So, for example, if uh, ideally here's your here's your simple thing. If you could clean all the panels on a roof in an instant, and there's no clouds, then you would be able to see a solar gain starting here. And then a solar gain ending there, like in a, you know, if you could clean them all in an instant, you'd see this solar gain, and you'd be able to measure that. How how your your three point six watts became four point two watts. You know, the difference is 0. 0.6 watts times how many hours is how much money times how many days is how much money. You know, assuming the the normal weather. Yeah. So you, it's too much for residential. But the principle is right. Yeah, is that what, like what, when you get into a conversation with the solar panel farms or the, the company that's putting on the solar panels at a, at a larger scale, it's nice that you're going, "Hey, I'm here to maintain your solar gain, or I'm here to make sure that you never lose your solar gain that you should be getting out of your uh, solar farm." Or like Chris Honey said, which I don't actually know anything about this part, he said to keep warranty they need to be cleaned yearly. Now, I don't, I don't know the, what company, what brand. Chris, honey, do you know right. what brand yes. that is? But yeah, there's, there's yeah. different angles to approach while we're also talking about the technical data. Like, how, like I'm here, Pez, to try and pull this into like, what's the sales pitch? How does this relate to like the everyday life of a service professional? How do they use the data? You know, and then just yeah. So I'll go. I'll it. go geeky. Harrison will translate it and make it and make it you know more more usable. You know, and then I'll I'm, come I'm back. Simple. And work. Perry's uh, complex. <laughs> you haven't noticed that, have you, Ben? It's <laughs> <laughs> quite true. Um, here we go. So, here's, a, here's a good one. Isn't it true? Production temporarily improves with the cooling water effect. Also, location is a huge variable. Hmm. From Facebook user. Yeah, what happens that if somebody isn't logged in, um, it comes in as Facebook user. So if you, but if you see that with your own post, you can put your name in afterwards and we can answer with your name. Oh, um, really? Okay. There's actually a link where they can fix that. Um, so I'll type okay. that in here. Cool. Yeah, great. Um, and Paul, Noah's there, Ben, so we can pull Noah into the screen. I am not controlling it. Yeah, Sorry, Ben, I'm helping out at the same time. Yep. Double producer. Right. We got it. Okay, so so what so so what what the topics that we can talk about are how to clean a panel most efficiently, right? What's the most efficient way to clean a panel? Um, then the math of of solar panel cleaning is that the cost at, at a commercial level 
if you go to clean a solar panel farm, the cost of cleaning has to be less than the solar loss, right? So if a guy's going to lose um, $1,000 every three months because the panels are dirty, then you have to be able to clean the panels for less than $1,000 in order for him to have a gain from your cleaning, right? And that's the difficult part because that is actually somebody's going to challenge you if you go, yeah, 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 I can do it, but you're charging $5 a panel. He ain't going to be able to do it at $5 a panel. The solar farm, yeah. farms that we've worked with guys with are talking like three to six seconds per panel to clean them in order mm. to be viable. In order to be yeah. viable. We don't have a lot of uh, solar farms here. We primarily have windmills, but we have a lot of solar on homes, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. And solar on home is good. It, um, and then the other thing is, that you, you you know... But I know why people are putting it on homes currently in the U.S. because there's a huge tax write-off. And I know that because my brother is a tax accountant and he's worked for the top three big firms here in the United States, EY, and they have yeah. this huge tax write-off that you can do with solar panels, tax credits, yes. basically. Yes. The, the, the return... So, you know, the, the return on investment on that is still when you actually look at it can be as still as even with the subsidies can be as far as 20 years, mm -hmm. right? The salt, the actual write off against the, the capital investment in the solar panels. But, um, so it's quite different to the world that I live in where you're trying to get a return mm -hmm. on investment in a day or a week or a, I heard this month, one, you know one I mean? family that they, all they did is they only wanted the solar panels for the tax credit. They didn't care about maintaining them at all. Yes. Well, yes. Maybe then their pitch to them is more on the aesthetic side. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, your house looks dirty because your solar panels are dirty. Maybe you don't even care <laughs> about how well they look, but do you really want them to look shit? Like it's also <laughs> as part yeah. of like the appearance of your property. And sure. you look like a yes. person that has pride in yourself, yes. you know, <laughs> and pride in the things that you own. Clean shoes, then, clean car. Bang. You should have clean solar panels. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I just good. double gunned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, so so if you so here's the thing, Ben. In a at a domestic level, if you mm -hmm. can clean the panels inside of an hour, right? Um, and and the two hours that are really close together, uh, I'll show you that, Chris, in a second. The two hours that are close together is you've got your azimuth, which is normally noon, right? But with daylight saving, it may not be noon. I'm not sure. It might be. It might be one o'clock, one p.m. Actually, yep. no. It would most likely be noon because daylight saving throws the cycle of the sun into the workday, right? So the, the workday starts at the no, same time. It doesn't change That's the whole it reason. Doesn't change, it doesn't, doesn't change it? the cycle of the sun. No, no. The sun keeps doing what the sun does. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, like for what you perceive. So, like, no, your when day your clock, ends, it's the azimuth is moved so that you get a longer day, but but yeah, the azimuth just the time the, the clock the clock is moved the azimuth stays the same. So, so the the sun's highest point stays the same. The clock mm -hmm. moves. That's why you guys so don't you have can, daylight savings, and your guys's sun is always staying the same. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, the if you Easy. take if you take the hour before and the hour after. Right, these are of the peak solar energy time. These, this is your. This can be a before and after, if it fits your schedule. I wouldn't just say I only do solar between here and there, but if it fits your schedule and you wanted to have a look at, it's got to be again. It's got to be a non-cloudy day. This is only so that you can read the numbers and be able to refer to them. You know, I cleaned somebody's house the other day, and you're telling the truth. You're not making it up, right? I cleaned their panels, you know, I started at 11.30, I finished at 12.30. The number between 11 and 11.30 when I got there was 3.6. The number when I had finished was 4.2. That's the solar gain from cleaning the panels. If it's 3.6 to 3.7, right, then you go, that's not much solar gain, for example, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, um, and if Peter Thomas is on, he might even, um, he might find an old video that he sent me because he actually did it in a home and that, that could help as well. All right, let's pull up the, um, the, the graph image, Ben, and this will help. Okay. 
So this is the actual graph from cleaning the roof solar system of our factory. The guy who runs the solar panel system on the roof um, has it in three, um, three arrays, they're called, arrays, A-R-R-A-Y, three arrays. So, so we have one array is blue, one is yellow, one is red. The three arrays are identical in size, so they produce the same amount of energy under, the, under, under given conditions. And just so you understand why this guy works with smaller solar systems, what he does is he goes to a fact, like in, in, for example, in Ningbo, you cannot ride a gas powered motorbike in anywhere in the, in the greater city. No gas powered motorbikes. Every yep. motorbike must be Everything has to be scooter. electric. Right. Also, you're Everything. getting tax credits for having electric cars now. So you yes. have no tax yes. on the purchase of your car if you buy it yes. as an electric. Yes. So what he does is that he installs solar panels and bike charging systems, right? So he has a, ba a battery bank and then he installs in the factory, you know, maybe there's 50 or 100 um, scooters and the and the staff want to charge their 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 scooters, and he can charge the, the company. He he can charge them, you know, ten cents per day. You know, they they when they plug their bike in, you know what I mean. So it's a, it's a really clever. He uses the roof of the factory to charge the scooters of the workers, so that the workers always have their scooters charged. And and that's that's his gig. So this is what this is all about. Now. If we look, you can see after cleaning red is the left-hand side of the blue. Uh, we'll, well, actually, far to the left, you'll see a blue band. That's when we cleaned red. Yeah. But the, the important part of after cleaning red is that when we'd cleaned red, red is now delivering the highest solar gain. Yellow is um, maybe 15% less. It's dirty. And blue is maybe 40 percent less can you see that yeah see if you can point have you got the uh have you got cursor pro up i do but no, i have uploaded the oh slide. you can't get yeah. to this okay all right so you'll see the little horizontal red line that's red after cleaning red the the yellow which has got a hundred is yellow not cleaned and the 64 on the little blue line that's blue not cleaned now blue is closest to the pollutant which is really making the panels dirty right they are really dirty now then then you can see the blue slot which was lunchtime because they turned their machines off and so it was safe to go on the roof because the plastic pollutants are not in the in the air and so we cleaned yellow and blue now after lunch and after those panels are cleaned, red, it, it's become cloudy. That's why it's going up and down and like that. But, but you look at yellow is now higher than red and blue is now almost equal to red. So all three panel arrays are clean. All three panel arrays are delivering a noticeable solar gain. Yeah. But the most important piece of data or the easiest one to look at is to look at the blue and say when that blue was that dirty, it was delivering 40% less solar gain than the red. And after the blue was cleaned, it's delivering the same solar gain as the red. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Because the blue line after cleaning is pretty much parallel to the red line. Yeah. So the red line is a reference. Red line is clean. Yellow was dirty. It's the furthest away from the pollutant. Blue was really dirty. It was closest to the pollutant. So the panels were, were, were more dirty. And then you clean them both. And then all three arrays are delivering, you know, that much more. You got like yellow started below and ended up higher. Blue started way below and ended up pretty much the same. So then you can see that's a genuine, you know, solar gain from, from cleaning solar panels. And that's worth money. Yeah. And while we're on the topic of dirty panels, can you answer Chris's question of how yeah. dirty? Uh, yeah. I would like to know and just how dirty a yeah. panel needs to be to make a difference. Yeah, that's good, Ben, because um, we, we need to read them out. 
I know what you're saying. Um, okay, so um, the it's 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 really a, the answer is a, a a banana this color. You know, it, it's so difficult to without being um <laughs> that without being on site because we what we don't know is you know what is the cost of the panel, what is the rebate from the electricity or the value of the electricity that you're getting. So then you can't you can't quantify the solar loss. If you can't quantify the solar loss, um, the value of the solar loss, then it's hard to quantify the, the value of the so, of the solid gain from cleaning. Like how often should I clean? You know, if you clean, for example, if you cleaned every day and charged a hundred dollars, there's no way it would be profitable for the for the customer. So then, should I clean it every month or should I clean it? And then you go geographically, like in Yemen, um, the same as Dubai. Their situation, they have sandstorms almost every day, right? Then it's super humid, so you're sweating like crazy. So there's high humidity. In the morning, the humidity becomes dew and it settles on the panel. Then the sandstorm comes in and the sand sticks to the panel. Then the sun comes out and it's 40 degrees, which would be 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And the sun cooks this, this, the clay-type sand onto the panel. And then the sun sets and then the dew comes and then it, it just goes over and over again. And so it starts cooking on. So that's quite different if you're in the in a dust bowl area to somebody who's in a city area where there's really, you know, limited pollution from 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 dust, you know, and clay and sand and stuff like that. So but I think that the 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 the, the layman's determinant is if you can see the surface of the panel, then there's a then there's a noticeable, noticeable as in you can notice the solar, the, the 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 reflection of the solar energy is coming back to your eyes rather than going through to the panel, and that's your that's basically your point of of that, that's as far as I would go from a residential point of view, you know. But from a commercial point of view, then you would start to do the math, right? Because they will have this, these graphs, a real commercial installation will have these graphs available. They'll have software tracking, you know, every, every watt of power created by those, by those panels. I think what also matters is what is, what level of dirty does the panel need to be? What's the least level of dirty does the panel need to be for a guy like Chris to be able to talk to the customer and say, this is dirty enough to be affecting your solar gain? Yeah, like, and that's when I think if your panel, if you can see the surface of the panel, right? Because the surface of the panel is meant to be glass and you're not meant to see glass. Glass is transparent. Yeah. So if you can see the surface of the panel, you're seeing dirt. That dirt, that dirt is reflecting your solar energy that you want to go through the glass into the solar panel. Right. On so how, how long would you take to clean a panel? Like what, what is a good time and what's a shit time? Um, in, a, in a solar farm installation, it should be between three and six seconds in order for it to be profitable from all of the guys that I've ever talked about who clean, you know, you know, you know, 500 panel, 1000 panel, that kind of thing. If they're going to do it with, with labor, if they're going to do it with the machine. It's, it's different because they don't have the labor cost. Ben, so no, uh, do, how much do, do you charge labor. per panel? Like when you're cleaning, like as you quote. Uh, I don't clean panels, but I mean, Ben, you said you did, right? Yep. $10 a panel. $10? Wow. Oof. Yeah. Do you get, I mean, what's and your closing rate on? How many panels? Sorry. Sorry, no. No, you get good. Anywhere from 10 to 15-ish panels. Mm -hmm. nice and then... Right because the, we're not what? doing solar farms because we have no solar farms really here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you're fine. They're all you're completely fine. Yeah. You're completely fine. And, um, but then, so, so from a mathematical, from a solar math point of view, you'd say, how much electricity do I get? Oh, hang on, sorry. I'll mute myself. So I'm assuming that Perry has some construction or electricity work <laughs> going on. I don't know what's happening. A long boat is so, going out. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. Got it. So that's, that's basically you know, in between like a hundred on a boat. 
And when, you, when you're muscle. playing solar panels, Ben, are you doing that as a singular part of the job or is it like an add-on or like, are you cleaning windows at the same time? Uh, no, we're cleaning windows at the same time. Uh, sometimes we'll clean solar panels by itself, but we'll actually upcharge it a little bit because mm -hmm. like, let's say we're doing window cleaning and solar panel cleaning, we'll usually include a little small package discount is typically what we do in our estimates, like options, but yeah it and just then varies. it's, it's, of, it's of course an add-on yeah we do yeah and how much electricity does somebody get in boise idaho for 150 dollars oh i have no idea yeah i probably wouldn't go lower than ten dollars if you know i agree with you by the way worth my time. I, I totally I, I totally agree with you um I totally agree with you. Because then you I would just rather advertise window cleaning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So, so, um, and this is, this is an interesting thing about, you know, selling residential. I think the, the selling a residential is, is, is a, is an in principle, like a maintained panel, you know, from a maintenance point of view and it, and it doesn't take six seconds a panel. Yeah. I think Chris Honey's exactly right on that. It does not take six seconds a panel. You cannot get on a roll with, um, with six seconds of panel um, on a roof and you've got to climb onto the roof and you've got to harness yourself off and you've got to, doesn't it? There's no doubt $10 a panel. $10 a panel is the right number. Oh, I'm not sure of that. Yeah. Just definitely be, be safe, Ben. We need you, mate. Of course. Harness yeah. when you can. <laughs> I harness off, but there's some rookies out there that really don't care about mm. OSHA. Safety. Lots of guys lots of guys don't don't harness off okay so and george when we did this the, the safety with george he was saying that osha is now OSHA loss. you know yes. doing doing drive-bys on residential and and cracking down on residential yes. as if it's commercial yeah or the way that you would expect them to do a commercial okay yeah. so and and what i'm going to try and do is apply this to noah so noah when you see a solar panel right on a roof of a residential, you know what your pitch is and what your price is, right? It's going to right. be $10 a panel. The pitch is partially aesthetics. The reason you're knocking on their door to clean their solar panels is because you can see them right. and you shouldn't be able to see them. They should be able to see black or blue. If you can see white, you go, your solar panels are dirty and you're losing solar energy, right? So from a, from a, even if I only do them once a year, there's a maintenance value of cleaning them if you want to climb on the roof you know um there's a maintenance value of cleaning them and the, and you're going to get a solar gain and remember that the, the simple graph is um all cleaning everything gets dirty 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 and then you clean it and the moment you finish cleaning it starts getting dirty 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 again and then you clean it yeah so so it's actually an average you know, you get the maximum solar gain straight after the clean. Three months, six months, nine months later, you're going to get less and less solar gain because the panel's going to get dirtier and dirtier. And then I'm going to clean it again. Yeah. In Yemen, the farmers are cleaning them every day. Really? But they're Why cleaning them themselves. Because, is that because, because of sandstorms? the sandstorms? Yeah, they get a sandstorm every day. If they have a sandstorm. And the other thing, which you'll find interesting, is that the, the pitch of the panel is determined by the latitude. Ben, what? When you say pitch, what do you mean? Yeah, the pitch is the angle. Pitch so the at the, on the uh, no, no, the pitch of the panel, which well, is it's also quite the often, pitch of the roof, which is quite often. Well, in your area, they may attach it directly to the roof at the pitch of the roof. Yes, they will because because it's within five or ten degrees, and it's easier an easier yeah. installation. But actually, that's not the the case. If you're near the equator, the panel will be horizontal usually. And then the further away from the, the equator, because the sun is going around that way, the further away from the equator, the higher the pitch in the panel. So mm. the pitch in, in the pitch of the panel in Florida will be different to the pitch of the panel in Buffalo, New York. Have you seen the Tesla solar roofs that came out? Mm. Mm. Well, they've got, they've got a couple, haven't they, in the, over the years? Yeah, I was watching a video of this. They're guy. making the whole roof panel, like the, they're making yeah. the whole roof. Mm. The, solar panel. the actual, the actual, the house here in Idaho, and apparently 
only Tesla uh, will have their cleaners. Like they have an authorized list of cleaners because if they have somebody like me that's not authorized Tesla solar panel cleaner, then I can void the warranty. It's so great way for like, no great way for Tesla to keep making money. Oh, yes. what a brilliant scam! <laughs> and well, That's no, no, fantastic. no, it's not. It's not a scam. If if he, if your if your solar panel has a blue tinge on it, or you approach a solar panel that has a blue tinge on it, that's that's a coating, right? A nano coating called ARC, anti reflective coating. Anti reflective coating will give you a four percent increase in solar gain compared to a non anti reflective, right? So a normal glass um, solar panel. So now, if somebody damages the anti-reflective coating above a wafer. So they let's say let's say there's a bit of bird poop and they get out there with their steel wool and they go scrub, 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 and they scrape off the anti-reflective coating, right? That now has a, like an ozone layer hole, right? It has a hole in the solar panel where 4% more energy will go through that hole and hit that wafer. That wafer is no longer balanced with all the other wafers and ultimately that panel will fail. So what's it's that got, coating for? It's called a hotspot. It's an anti-reflective coating, mm. right? So it's it it stops it stops the light from bouncing this. off the glass. Yeah. So like the idea is the light should go and hit the um what is it that the 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 wafer uh, the black thing the wafer right? It, it, the light should go into the wafer so it can can convert to electricity. But if the glass on the outside of that reflect, I'm just trying to dumb it down because i'm the simple one here yeah but like if the, if the glass on the outside is reflecting the sun from that from going into the wafer then that sun's not being converted into electricity so the aic um increases the solar gain but like any window tinting can be damaged quite easily yeah and it's not a plastic it's a nano coating so it's very very thin and mm -hmm. ben that's why we that's why we brought out the, the silicon bristles that you have there. Peter Thomas has got a good um, one. How do you tell if they're coated with ARC? It's a blue, from the best of what I know, Peter, it's the blue tinge. Yeah, and so the softest bristle you can possibly use is a silicon bristle. So we, we brought out the silicon bristles. They kind of grab things off the, off the surface without, um, without uh, yeah, and actually there's one of those videos, Ben, if, it, if you, got it the side one where you can see the rocker but you can actually see the rocker rocking with yeah oh there even that one that photo you can see the silicon bristles so those silicon bristles are there to grab whatever's on the panel you know green green rubber is another one that does it but it's not as soft as silicon you know and the intention is to keep that panel that blue tinge you know without being able to damage it yeah hey pete if you're there um would you be able to find that video that you made i'm talking for two or three years ago where you, where you did the you, you actually took the photo of before and after of the meter or, or you made a video before and after on a solar panel job on a residential one um yeah so the, the anti-reflective coating if if somebody damages the anti-reflective coating you create a hot spot and that hot spot will ultimately break down the entire panel so so from a tesla's point of view they may be putting in you know high quality panels with a maximum solar gain and then they want to make sure that the average window cleaner doesn't come along with his, you know, scrubby brush and then get out his steel wool and, you know, and hit the panel and then take off that coating and then destroy the panel. Yeah. Hey Ben, have you, um, have you done any research on becoming a certified mm -hmm. uh, Tesla solar panel? We only have one house here as far as I'm aware, uh, Tesla roof. Perfect, okay. because Isn't no one funny? else, no one else will have that certification, and then you can go That's to true. other, you can go to other houses and say, "I've got the Tesla it's certification." You don't have Tesla panels to get it installed. Really? Yeah, but you, you don't yes. have you don't have Tesla solar panels. But I'm a I'm the certified guy in this area for Tesla, yeah. and therefore I am the best. To so I don't know if it costs money to be the Tesla certified dude, but someone yeah. needs to be it. They're not even you know, that good looking. Some, they're they're ugly. Don't say that to him if you picture. Oh, that's the eye. <laughs> beauty's in the eye of the picture, right now. They're so ugly. <laughs> I want some like. Oh, uh, now Elon's not going to come on the podcast, no, Ben. Yeah, oh, we were this we were this close. Us. 
<laughs> we just want to tell them about this podcast. Gonna, if we get banned from seen. Twitter, that's that's oh, on X. you, mate. That's, <laughs> X. that's great. Yeah. Okay, so Ben, can you guys talk among yourself? Because I think I've drunk too much water. Mm, I know it's what that water. means. Yeah, we'll just take you. We'll just turn your mic off and take you off stage. <laughs> uh, what Let's see, what can we talk about? Ben, tell me, tell me more about that brush. Yeah, it's a nice brush. What I what I love about it is there's this, and Harrison could probably elaborate on this. Uh, I think they're called yep. cotter pins. Mm -hmm. so like on my traditional brush which i really knew nothing about solar panel cleaning before perry told me everything is because i just normally used like a normal boar's hair tucker brush mm -hmm. so with that tucker brush it would swivel all the time and most of the time i will do solar panel from the ground and it was keep on swiveling on me it was hard time keeping the brush on the solar panel with this it's locked so it won't move so you can do straight pull actions and keep on going up and down and walk along the side of the, the roof, which is super helpful. Another yeah, nice that's our pivot lock, Ben. Pivot lock? So like, yes, yes, yeah, so it's on the web. It's on the website if anyone doesn't have it, but it yep. normally isn't needed for window cleaning. But yes, if you're going to go like six, seven stories mm -hmm. and you don't want to pivot, that's where that came yep. in. And also for solar yep. panel cleaning because of just like, the forces are a bit weird. It's a hassle. Um, depending on like which panels you're cleaning, if it's on a house or whatever. So. And another thing that's nice about this, that's not like your traditional um, brush is that there's jets on the bottom. Right. So as you're pulling it down, it's rinsing everything and pulling all that grime and gunk and dirt on the bottom. Now there are some jets on the, on the top to get nice and wet for the bristles. Cause we talked about like rubber sticking to like windows so it, it kind of lubricates it a little bit and then it goes you know cleans your solar panels but it's a fantastic brush it's a night and day difference compared to uh, yeah like when you're like when you're rinsing a solar panel it's totally different than a window because windows are vertical yes right? and so yes. that grab that grab that head of like the head of gravity is pulling that water off the glass and so the water can't sit onto the glass with like the dissolved solid still in it and then end up drying. Whereas on solar panels, because of the pitch of the um, of the panel, you need. No one else does this, by the way. We realize that once we turn the brush upside down, which is what happened at first, which um, which is when we realized it, was that that would uh, push the water off the glass. So you push all the dirty water off. So instead of using gra gravity, we had to use water pressure. There you go. You're back, B dog. We uh, are. <laughs> Exactly that. So I always say like window cleaners, like we, you know, there's that saying like you push it uphill and kind of like as window cleaners, we push on the ups, we agitate on the upstroke. So we're always pushing dirt up and then we're rinsing with the dirt coming down. But when, when you, when you have a panel, you know, at different parts of the world or at different angles, sometimes flat, right. Then you don't get the gravity pulling it off. And it's, and of course the dirt, the dirt and the sand has got, is going to be heavier than the water, so it's just going to drop to the bottom, and you end up with, with. Um, I feel you for you, Sean Parsons. Uh, I feel for you, mate. That's uh. So Sean Parsons left a comment. I left my solar rocket brush on a job, and they never called me to let dude, never called to let me know. We'll Ouch. never get over that loss. I'm doing yeah. the same thing. I'd give you a minute of silence, but we're live on a podcast, Sean, and uh, <laughs> it's just not good radio. Charlotte. That's great. Charlotte. Um, so Chris Honey, I generally clean the solar panel from above so the top jets push the water off. If you stand under the panel, the roof becomes slippery. Yes. Mm, so yes, and, and with solar rocker we give you two goosenecks, one so that you can be above the panel and the and the jets are on the low side, and then another one that you can clean, you know, from the ground and, and use um, and, 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 and have the jets on the bottom. So you need there's two goosenecks, one to turn it that way, one to turn it that way. Um, so almost um, like you've thought of okay. everything, P Dog. <laughs> I call well, oh, by the way, a... I call him P Dog, like Perry Dog. Um, just to yeah. it doesn't, and Pez doesn't dog, that Pez dog, P Dog. Yeah. So the other, the other thing, like, for, so how do we get down to three to six seconds a panel? And I'm not talking about residential because the total cost of getting on the roof is so high, right? And you're only going to clean 15 panels at six seconds. It's not going to make any difference. Um, 
Um, yeah, silicon will get. Uh, Sean Parsons is asking whether how silicon will get beef food off, but um, but yes, yes, you can talk to Byron. I think Byron did a. T- there's actually a video out where Byron did a test of the green rubber, magic eraser, and Tomcat, and maybe silicon bristles. I'm not sure, but you could check with Byron. Um, so, so from an efficiency point of view, what we want to do is be able to get on and off that panel as quickly as possible. Um, normally, if you're do cleaning solar panels, you are cleaning a dirty panel. So the idea of being able to pull the, dirt, the dirty water off, um, and you'll see that in, the, in some of these videos, Ben, that you'll see how the dirty water is coming off at the bottom, and you've already explained it. Thank you. So that also makes sense. Yeah, so you see there, you know, you're getting the, the majority of the panel off. And then the other one is you look how wide it is, and... Um, and the idea is that a, a standard solar panel is 39 inches wide. A solar rocker brush is 22 inches wide. So if you clean the left frame and you clean the right frame and it overlaps in the middle, you've got two sets of actions. Whereas if you go back, um, yes, a carburetor would definitely take off the ARC rubber. The carburetor pad would be a disaster. Um, do you know that first video we, where I showed you from 2011, me cleaning the panel in Dubai? Then, if you pull that one up, please, then you'll see this is like a standard 10 inch brush from, from those days. That's what a brush looked like. And you look at how many passes I need to make in order to get that brush to go across that panel. And it's very difficult to get an overlap, actually, you know, because it's so short, it's so, so, oh so gosh. narrow. Yeah. How young look so do young. you look in this video? <laughs> I know, mate. <laughs> it's all like, I, I, is your. Did you dye your hair back then, or was that was that actually that no, color? That's, that's natural. Yeah. Ten years is a long time at my age. You start falling apart. So, uh, um, no. <laughs> so, but you look at that. Like, if that's thirty nine inches wide and that brush is ten inches wide, you know, then you're going to do five or six passes to be able to clean that bro- that that panel. Let's say it's six because it, oh, well, let's say it's five, right? And you're going five passes to clean the panel and you can clean it with solar rocker with two passes with the same amount of effort and energy right then it's it's two 100 percent would be four so it's 150 percent faster well it's the same percent faster it's, it's by the going same math that you do for two passes well you're like all this math is math that we've like learned over the years with just like a squeegee and applicator and an applicator, right? Mm. It's the same thing. You know, yes. you don't, you, you want the size of your squeegee to um, be the most efficient for the glass that you're cleaning. So the same yes. thing. And the then brush, and the same as our brush panel, yeah. the same thing for, for yeah. a window, um, for window cleaning as well. For water and we, and what, what most people, some of the people who know us for a long time would remember that our original solar brush when we bought the first solar brush out under constructor brush was 39 inches wide, right? So we actually made a, a brush that that was one width of the solar panel. So you'd go up, down, up, down, move to the next one. But that was unreasonably heavy for the average worker um, who is often um a a, a light a, a light framed person let me put it that way you know you don't normally see great big guys you know doing doing hard labor cleaning and antonio antonio Flores worry, says but... have you all tested the silicon pad in real hot weather um the the key silicon's got a pretty high pretty high distortion point um that's why you, you know, you you get the oven mitts. You know the silicon oven mitts, so you can be you can be quite confident that it doesn't distort normally. But remember that the intention is that the silicon scrub is used with water underneath it. So there's that cooling. You know, the the, the water's not gonna. Um, the you know you're not just putting the silicon onto the onto the panel at maximum temperature and and um, then seeing if it can distort. Uh, but but at, to this point, we to this date, we don't have any distortion of the silicon bristles that we know about so and we don't have um you know it's not a, it's a not a bristle that breaks down you know that's what's nice about it these these grab type bristles the green rubber and the silicon i mean they don't break down like you know stainless steel wool will ultimately oxidize 
you know, so um, white non-scratch pad has got the little fibers in the, in the resin, the, uh, the little sharp bits in the resin, and those those wear down, so you replace those. So they're more replaceable than um, than these ones. Yeah. So, but the speed, the, the the number of passes that you take to clean a panel is really, really important as far as being able to clean your panel faster. Yeah, the mat. You know, so you see a lot of guys just using a window cleaning brush, but they'll do four passes to get across a, a, a panel. But you could do two passes, which means you're going to be twice as fast. Now, if it's only ten panels, it's no big deal. I'm going to tell you that because it takes way more time to get up on the roof, get to, get ready to clean, than the amount of time that you're cleaning. Yeah, that's what you, a lot of what you're charging for is just the fact that you're on the roof. But um, but once you get to a, a big installation, it becomes really, really valuable. Um, somebody, and this is Robert again, um, thank you. Watching the vids of using other pads, cheese grater, bronze, etc., would also mess with the ARC. Yes. From our perspective, only you could use Magic Eraser or Silicon Bristles with ARC. And if the debris on the glass is sand, or grit, then you wouldn't use magic eraser because it'll get caught in the grit, right? So then you then you're down to just silicon. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be you don't want to be in a position where you've damaged the, the ARC coating. However, a lot of re, I think a lot of residential installations are not ARC. So, so, so how do you, you how would you handle everyone? How how would you handle? Let's say you're on a job and you've made a mistake. Right, you're like, oh crap! I used my stainless steel scrub on an ARC panel, and I've Expensive damaged fixed. it. Expensive don't, fix. How do you talk to the customer? Don't, uh, well, How would you talk to the, the customer? The, 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 uh, me? The, the do you rush? Is, do you, do oh, well, <laughs> that's not me, but uh, I think the first thing is you should do an inspection. You know, just go and do an inspection of the panel and see if and see if the blue if you, the blue's been Do you write a note? Damaged. Like when you like hit a car, <laughs> just you like, somebody's you, car you and, write a note and you put it up there on the solar panel. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. and the next time you're up there, you're like, oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Careful. Yeah, I think it's really important. You know, but I, I would just go up because I'm not saying that one use of cheese grater will damage ARC. The real point is that that the ARC coating is a very hard coating, but it's it's nano thin, and so it's able to be damaged, you know. And we haven't tested that. We did. We have not done how to damage ARC. You could probably talk talk to Tatong Harrison about that. See yep. if he's got a he's got a panel an ARC coated panel that we can damage. He might. Yep, I can organize that. Very then you easily. can get some steel. I wonder if you could repair. The... I, I wonder what the repair job would be on a micro, uh, yeah. on a nano coating, right? Would you have to remove the nano coating yeah. first and then, like, you know, like anodizing? I have to remove yeah, the anodization and then re anodize? Yeah, I think you'd have to replace the whole the whole glass. But again, you could ask the Tong. The Tong is the guy, he's actually a Californian um, Chinese guy, and he got. He went back to China under the Thousand Talent Program, but he's a professor of um, and a university teacher as well. Like he's a super, super smart guy. So um, we can pretty much ask him anything to do with solar, and that's uh, that's pretty helpful for us. All righty, what else do we want to know? Well, this is about coming up to the hour. You've got about two minutes left. Yeah, I know we're really pretty close to done it. Oh, the other thing which I'll talk about is. Um, to understand the same as window cleaning technique is if and when possible, full length of the panel strokes. Don't do part of the panel, another part of the panel, another part of the panel, you know, no little scrubby jobs. As much as possible, try and get from the top to the bottom, you know, and sometimes there's other panels around you and other times it's not possible. And of course that's, that's real life. But if you can do full full length strokes, you're going to pull all the dirt off in a single stroke, and um, and then you've got a, a good chance of um, a good chance of efficiency. And that's that's where the guys using a 22 inch panel uh, um, brush, sorry, on a 39 inch wide panel, and and full length of the panel in each stroke. It's you know two actions on one side, two actions on the other side. Go to the next panel. 
And then we bring in the Matt Adwell, you know, the supervisor can go through and have a look at if there's anything left on the panel and then work out how he's going to clean it. Remember that, Ben? You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's logic because you don't, you don't treat every panel as if it's the dirtiest panel. You treat every panel as if it's the cleanest panel and you go back and spot, if you're necessary, you can spot clean anything that's left on the panel. Michelle's got a good question. Tap water or pure water? I think pure uh, water. Well, you see, yeah, I would say tap water. It's just like treating like a window, you no know, spots. I would, no, I don't think so. It depends where you are, right? It depends on how much, how much spots are there. But on yeah, solar yeah. farms, like this, this guy in Yemen, he's got to pull the water out from under the ground. The water is very valuable. I've got a bird tweet, tweeting in the background. But, um, oh, so he's got to pull my the water out of the ground. No. <laughs> so the, so the, he's got to pull the water out of the ground. It's a high TDS. Oh, look at him, little muddly. Um, so he's got to like, pull the water out of the ground. The water is really valuable. And he, if you go to purify it, half the water goes to waste with all the minerals in it, you know? So I go, well, half the water goes to waste. So how now you've got to work out how valuable is this water and or, you know, um, can you use that wastewater? And then that's another, you know, piece of infrastructure where you've got to catch catch the water and use it somewhere because it's valuable. The wastewater away? So in Yemen, you know, it's desert, right? So when they pull the water out of the ground, it's valuable. Mm. Like. It's a, it's a it's a scarce resource rather than a in some parts of Yemen not, not all he said some of them they've got you know you know water coming down the mountain and they can pick it up but but oh catching the water from valuable. the solar panels no no they I don't think they do that but they've got a river you know some of his installations he said we can get get river water but but on the in the desert areas where they've got the desert installations then water they're pulling the water out you know from mm. from aquifers and in that case. You know, wasting half the water so that you can leave no spots. You might be better. You might be better leaving spots from the, you know, that and that's that way. That's the honest way up of what's the solar gain versus what's the cost. Mm -hmm. Does wax residue from B two effect gain enough to be concerned? I would suggest no. Um, but I would, if you use the silicon bristle, you will get that wax off. Or if you use a magic eraser, you will get that wax off. Like any of the the green rubber. Green rubber, silicon bristle, magic eraser will take the waxy stuff off, but bristles won't take wax off. Yeah. I think what matters is also customer satisfaction as well. So what, what makes them feel, oh, I've gotten my money's worth. So even if the BPU doesn't affect the solar gain, maybe that doesn't matter. Well, it's Maybe the wax so. under the beepoo. So he's going to take the he's going to take the 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 beepoo off, but he's but there's a little waxy, little waxy, you know, hydrophobic um, pack patch that's underneath it. And you want to get in Windows, you want to get that off. How often do solar farm panels solar farms get their panels cleaned? That is determined in where the where the the guy running the solar farm. He knows what his solar gain is, and then he knows how much he can afford to get the panels cleaned. And the cost of cleaning has to be less than the losses. So they work that out themselves. Depending on their geographical area, they work that out with the cleaning guy. If the cleaning guy's at three cents a panel, you know, or three or three seconds a panel at at, at, at fifteen dollars an hour or whatever it is, you know, he's gonna say that's how much each panel costs me, and then my value of being cleaned. If I clean once every quarter versus once every six months versus once every year, right. so there's no, no one answer. But you got to be good at math to win those jobs. That's not. I'll make your panels look beautiful. Those ones. That's not the pitch. <laughs> They're good questions, aren't they? Because yeah, they don't really care. Big business doesn't really yeah. care. Well, they do care about the aesthetics and the pride of the company. But you know, if you've got yeah, a solar farm, comes down, that, that, that ain't all about comes pride. Down to money. No, that's, that's all bottom money. line, baby. That's that's all it yeah. is. All it is, and the, and there's no way a purchasing guy can justify spending more on cleaning than what you got from the electricity. Yeah, they really don't pay much per panel, but that's why that's why you have to work out how to clean it in three seconds, six seconds, mm -hmm. like that. But if you get to ten seconds a panel, you, you're probably not going to be competitive if you ever come across a solar farm. Also, if you didn't see this, Pez, um, Robert Les is saying he'd like to talk to you personally. Oh, you. nice. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't need to pay me, bro. Just I'm pay, it, just pay us in product, Robert. Right? <laughs> just buy. Yeah, just go yeah, to futureofclean.com, buy a GeForce. I'm kidding. Just direct. I'm no, not. direct. Yeah, but we're gonna have so we're gonna have service at Sigma merch. Oh, we been. You are the merch uh, king, mate. Your <laughs> stuff looks amazing. Merch. Please. I try. Yeah. <laughs> Robert says he's making 250 plus an hour with Reach-It Equipment. Oh, there he is. Yeah, true. Let's go, Man, Robert. Let's go. <laughs> it's definitely true. Not bad, bro. Go to um, just direct message me in Messenger or WhatsApp. Um, probably met, start, try and start the Messenger. Anyway. Yeah. And if you can't reach him, go to futureofcleaning.com and then go to live chat and I'll uh, send you a link to how to get to everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah good, 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 good. Very easy. No, Wait. you got any questions? No, I've been taking it all in. I'm gonna go and, and look for solar panels tomorrow. I'm driving around and I'm gonna start keeping yeah. an eye out for them. You know, a certain... hey, driving around. And do you know the other thing I'd do? If you've got mm. a big screen TV, go to Google Earth. Yeah. And mm. start go look for them. Flying over the top of your neighborhood, right. and you'll you'll work out how <laughs> yeah. many. Uh, oh, we did that. Many... We do that for motorcycle trails in China. Oh, do you really? Well, it's not really Google that's Earth, by the way. But like, yeah. but, like, <laughs> but yeah, you guys don't have a trail so, app. So we work really, really well. No, no, because it's China, right? So nobody rides motorbikes, only us. Oh, makes right? sense. Makes so, sense. but these are the these are the old tracks from the old days, where you got one village on one side of a hill and another village on the other side, and another village up there. So there's the walking trails, and then mm. the 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 the. the in those days, I don't know about now, but but in those days they would bury their dead in the hills. So, and then once a year everybody has um, a tomb sweeping day, and then everybody goes back to where their ancestors forever are buried, and then they clean their gravestone and put flowers and burn some incense mm. and burn some some paper cars and houses to send them to the people in the sky and all that. And um, but these little tracks are are at least maintained at that level. So so when we take the, the, the trail bikes out, you know, we can we can ride for hours through all these tracks. Yeah. That's yeah, fantastic. Oh, all. talking and about uh, extreme all on them. extreme Blurred. sports, Pez. Yeah. Talking about extreme sports. Um have have you ever come across someone getting shocked by a faulty panel? Ooh. Right. The I asked Tong this, and we could get a we could get a quantified answer again from De Tong. But De Tong said the panel is not your problem; it's the inverter that's under the panel. That's where the that's, that's where the, the the electricity. So, if the panel array has been maintained, then then the water is not going to get to the, where the electricity is. Right? The panel has got the the panel is the panel, and the electricity is underneath the panel. Um, so. So that's the total sum of my knowledge that I can recall because I did have a long conversation with them, but I can't recall if there was anything more in depth than that. But the most important thing is, um, is to look at the installation and just make sure that, 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 the, that the electronics are not exposed from the top. In other words, the panels are touching and and you're not could you do something so like you know me i'm i'm very process generating a process heavy heavy person right so like i want to make a process out of everything Mm -hmm. um could you have some sort of form or some sort of uh sign off point with the customer to say hey i just got to check for my own safety have your panels been regularly maintained by an electrician or um that they're not dangerous right Yeah. So just to say, like, because when you put it back on them, maybe they, maybe they can do a check as well. You know, maybe they know they something that we don't they, know. They, they would. I mean, we don't know. They don't know. You know, they would never know. They don't. And 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 so you don't hear about people being shocked. And there are guys who are just not taking any precautions, not even aware that there's electricity underneath there, right? So you don't hear about people being shocked on solar installations. But what I would suggest is, Harrison, if you put that down as a question for De Tong, right? Yep. What conditions, what, under what conditions could somebody get a shock? And then what we'll do then is we'll bring this up in a future, it might sometime next week, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll drop it in. And, and for, for the, if anybody wants to know the answer, right? 
right to Ben and we'll make sure that we get the answer to you directly. But otherwise, we'll drop it into one of these, uh, one um, of the live streams. No, like if you, want, if you want that answer, if safe, this, this, this safety matters to you, watch every episode of Service Six Sigma <laughs> until we get it to you. Exactly. Got to put the hook, Terry. You got to put the okay, hook. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yes. Yes. So we will get the answer for you. Well, under what conditions are solar panels dangerous, from an electrical point of view? And then, and then, uh, Harrison. The other one is that if you're not sure, what would you do to disconnect the electricity function of the solar panel while you're cleaning it? Like, where is that switch? If there is a switch. But the solar panel is going to be making electricity anyway, right? Regardless, you can turn it off, but you can't turn the solar panel off, right? You can turn off the where yeah. the electricity goes to, but you can't turn off your source because the source is the sun. So, yeah, it's a really, I, I, Sean said my life matters to me and I completely, oh, when now, the sun Chris, goes down there. That know. is a beautiful answer. That is the most yes. obvious thing, and I, I would never have said it, mate. Beautiful. No, when the sun goes down, clean solar yeah, panels. The panels are safe. <laughs> Sean doesn't want uh, death by solar panels on his tombstone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. at least that's one way cool. to uh, go out of your, you know, misery. Yeah, <laughs> misery. <laughs> that's not misery. Okay, let's go. I think that's good, eh? Are we good? Yep. You yep. good, Noah? Yep. Sweet. All right. Well, that was our um, impromptu and unplanned um, solar math presentation. Over to you, Ben. Okay. Well, we just made myself big. <laughs> well, we want to thank everybody for joining today's stream. Um, and we will catch you guys on Monday. Is that right? Is it? Yeah. No. Is it today Thursday no, we, we or got Friday? Tomorrow. Cool. I'm sorry. Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah. We got all my days are off. I took work off uh, the past three days, so <laughs> spending time with family. All right, guys. Okay, we will catch bang. you guys another time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was great. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, come on, oh, come on Noah. Noah. You, you, I'm on, sure Noah. you updated every, your software. It worked for you once. Every, I'm good every time, Noah. Every yeah. time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got more important I like things to do. I, I love it. All right, like guys. <laughs> no more fun. All right, guys. <laughs> Oh, hello there, Ben here with Epic Extra Services, president and co-founder of Service Six Sigma. We want to thank you for joining our live stream today. We appreciate any feedback is welcome. Please comment on our uh, future posts um, and live streams. We always love to see the engagement in our live streams. Always ask questions, always post your comments and reshare this video uh, with your friends, family, Facebook, social media. Share it everywhere as much as possible. We would highly appreciate it and if you know of a guest that would be great for our live stream, please pass them our way. You can visit our website, service6sigma.com, and there is a guest contact form that way, and we will interview that guest to make sure they are a good fit for our live stream. Again, thanks again for joining our live stream at 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we will see you next time.